You're listening to the Cat Breeder Sensei Says Podcast, the show that supports the reputable breeding of pedigree cats. This is your show host, April Catito, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about a few things you can do to vet your breeders when you're thinking about buying a kitten. We will get into all of this juicy stuff right after this short message. Do you want to learn how to become a successful breeder of pedigree cats? Now you can. For the first time ever, enroll in an online training course that takes you step-by-step through everything you need to know to get on the right track. Visit CatBreederSensei.com to sign up today and use code PODCAST21 to get $25 off. Okay, we're back. Just a disclaimer. All the information that is shared in this show is really based on personal opinion or personal experience. So I know there's more than one way to do things right. So I'm not saying by any means that the way that I discuss in any of my podcast episodes is the only way. It's not cut and dry. In fact, there are many, many different varying opinions about how to do this the right way. Not just the topic we're going to discuss today when it comes to acquiring your kittens, but just breeding cats in general. Everybody is super opinionated, and one of the bad things about that is everybody's real quick to judge and start attacking you for the way that you run your cattery. So as as long as you feel good about what you're doing and you're doing everything to the best of your ability and keeping those goals in mind of a good cattery, good feline husbandry, health, temperament and type you know then you're doing the best job that you can don't let the people out there attack you and make you mm, second guess or question yourself about the way you're doing things if you really feel like you're doing everything in the best interest of the cats so with that being said let's talk about buying a kitten to add to your cattery, or maybe this is the first time that you're actually acquiring a kitten that you're gonna use in your breeding program. So one of the first things people do when they decide to become a breeder is go out and start buying kittens. Well, I don't want you to do that so fast. So I want you to slow down, take your time, and really be selective when you're choosing your kittens and more importantly, the breeders that you are doing business with. There are a lot of horror stories out there from just me. I have my own and I'll tell you about a few of them um, in a little bit, but it's not just me. There's a lot of people who have horror stories when it comes to buying kittens and importing kittens from other countries and buying locally from breeders. It's just a lot of stuff goes on out there And, well, you don't hear about the good stuff as much as you do hear about the bad stuff because people are quick to go to Facebook, the groups, and just, you know, start telling their story. And sometimes it's just one-sided. So I always try to be objective and, you know, remember that there's the other side to the story. Well, there's three sides to every story, right? Isn't there? There's my side there's your side and then there's the truth so everyone has you know a view of how everything happened and you know that both sides are going to be opinionated so horror stories do happen though so you have to do the best job that you can uh, when it comes to due diligence and research and making that decision on who you're going to buy a kitten from before you ever buy a kitten so hopefully today's episode will help you think a little bit more about how many questions you ask and the things that you look at when it comes to buying a kitten okay so usually people start their search on social media Instagram, Facebook, these are the two biggest places where you can find breeders of your specific breed. So there's groups and there's pages and there's individual people and you can start following the people and joining these groups, etc. What I suggest and what I like to do is just follow these people for a few months and you get familiar with the way their kittens look, the type of kittens that they have, type meaning what they look like, and if that look is consistent, 
You can also see things like the interaction from the breeders with their followers and maybe even their customers. If an issue comes up, how do they handle that? And then you can see them tagging people, like when they have uh, shipped a kitten or they sell a kitten to someone, you know, they'll tag the people and say, hey, this kitten has arrived in this location and he's doing great. And I like to see that because then I feel like that person is real. And I say that because there are scammers out there who will sell kittens that aren't even real. They don't exist. They steal photos from breeders pages and create new Facebook pages and attract new people who aren't familiar with the process and sell them just basically a dream. So they use photos and videos and collect money and then you never get the kitten. They ghost you. And they do that to breeders and pet owners. So you have to be really careful about who you're doing business with. So if you are following some of the breeders on these social media accounts after a couple of months you feel like there's somebody that you can do business with and you know you can start having conversations with them and asking them more questions about their cattery and their belief system and things like that so start following some breeders on social media that you like like the way their kittens look and get a feel of how this breeder is um, I like to do that. I like to watch people for several months before I ever say, yeah, okay, I want one of those kittens. I want one of the kittens. So I always say, choose the breeder first and then get a kitten from that breeder instead of finding the kitten and then trying to mold this breeder into something that you want her to be when really she's not. You really just like the picture of the kitten. So the kittens can be impulsive. You can see one and say, oh my God, I got, I, that's the one, I have to have that. And that can get you in trouble sometimes because the kittens sell really fast. So you may find one that you really like and then you just want it so bad that you just skip all the due diligence and send a deposit and you know, that'll get you in trouble. So take your time. There's always going to be another pretty kitty that's waiting for you very soon. Once you find the breeder, ask for some referrals from people that they have sold kittens to, both as pets and to breeders. You know, they've sold kittens with breeding rights. Those um, are two different categories. They are treated completely different when issues come up and, you know, repeat business and things like that. So get referrals from these breeders and talk to the people and see how they feel about the experience that they had with that breeder. Now remember, when you ask for referrals, you're not going to get anybody that they've had a negative experience with. So um, you're going to get the best of the best. You'll get the cream of the crop referrals, and that's okay. At least you can get some of the best testimonies from their customers and see how they feel about it. You do want to know what club or federation that the breeder is registered with, especially if you are working with someone who is in a different country. Then you want to verify with your club if they accept those pedigrees. So for instance, TICA, the International Cat Association, they have a list of clubs that they accept pedigrees from on their website. So you just wanna make sure that it's compatible and if you are a member of TICA and you're getting a pedigree from a different club, then just make sure that there's not gonna be a problem registering the cat into TICA with the pedigree that that breeder uses. Sometimes they are members of different clubs and if they know that you need a certain pedigree, like a WCF pedigree, then they'll register the kitten in that club to make sure you get the appropriate pedigree. Review the breeder's contract. So most of the time the breeder will have a contract that they require when they're selling you a kitten with breeding rights. Now not everyone does. I've bought several kittens of course, they were from other countries, but they did not require a contract. They instead just did a transfer form so that I could register the kitten in my name. But most of the time, breeder is gonna have a contract. Make sure you review the terms of the contract and that this is something that you are in 100% agreement with. I'm a stickler for contracts, so make sure that you are abiding by the contract. I mean, we sign these agreements and these are the terms that we're both agreeing to when we do the transaction. So I think that ethically, 
the contract that is signed between the breeder and the buyer should be upheld. Now, once you find a kitten that you really are in love with from a breeder that you approve of, then you'll want to start doing some digging, some research on the kitten and the lines that he comes from. So you can ask the breeder for what I call the initial package, which is the pedigree for the parents, which would essentially be the pedigree for the kitten, pictures of the parents, and all of the genetic DNA testing that they have on the parents. Usually, the breeders don't have DNA tests for the kitten specifically because they're usually very young and have not tested that kitten individually. But they do usually have tests on both of the parents, the mom and the dad. So which test you're looking for is going to be based on whatever is the standard for your specific breed. So I know for Maine Coons, I'm looking for minimum of four tests. I want HCM, PK, which is polycystic kidney disease. I want PK deficiency and I want SMA. So those are the four that I want to see negative tests for on both of the parents. If they're negative for both of the parents, then they're gonna be negative for the kitten. Sometimes one or two of the tests are missing for the parents. In that case, you'll want to ask the breeder if they'll test the kitten specifically for that test. And usually they'll ask you to pay for the test and then it takes a couple of weeks for you to get those tests back. So if you have a copy of the parents test and the pedigree, well make sure that they match. Make sure the names on the pedigree match the names on the tests. Otherwise you may have something different. You may have something like an oddball situation. I've had this happen where I have the pedigree of the parents, so I see their names, the mother and the father of the kitten, and then I'm matching them up with the testing, the DNA test for the parents, and the names are different. So I'm wondering, hmm, why are the names different on the tests? And then as I look further, I see that I have the test for the grandparents and not the parents of the kitten. So you have to be aware of name matching and make sure that you actually have the right test. Sometimes they'll send you just tests for the wrong cat on accident. So just check everything and make sure that you have what you're looking for. This is where you want to just, you know, be careful and have a look at everything and slow down. And just because you get a package from the breeder with what you're asking for, don't assume that everything is there. Actually verify, trust and verify. Now when you receive the pedigree, people look for some different things. They're looking for championship titles in the pedigree, bloodlines, catteries that these cats are coming from. And then you can reference that in the paw heads database and start doing some test mating using the other cats that you already own. So when you get a kitten, you should add their pedigree to paw heads so you can do test mating in the future. There's a way to kind of back out if the cats aren't in paw pads. There's a way that you can start building your own pedigree in there to do test matings and stuff. I actually teach how to do that in the course, the complete guide to breeding pedigree cats. There's some, a video in there about how to do that. Some cool things on paw pads that you want to check when you get the pedigree and you can look the cats up in paw pads is the health program notes. So within each breed, there's usually some, of course, some risks of health that can be tracked through genetic markers. And the health program allows for people to participate in the health program and have their cat tested on a regular basis. The results are posted in the Paw Pets database. So when you're doing pedigree research, you can actually see anyone who's participating in the health program. There's a little medical icon in their name. You can click on it and see what the results are of the test. So that's kind of cool. I always like to look and see, you know, if there was any health issues down the line that has been reported through the health program. So that's something that you want to do when you are doing your research on this particular kitten that you're looking at. Also, be sure to check the inbreeding coefficiency percentages. There's an entire lesson on how to check the inbreeding coefficients and what they mean and kind of the limits that you want to stick to when you're buying a kitten and when you are mating your cats together. So the higher the coefficiency is, the more risks this you come across when it, when it comes to health factors. So 
there's a whole lot of that goes into the coefficiency so definitely want to check that out in the complete guide to breeding cats course if you're not familiar with that yet and do some test mating again with any cats that you currently have if this is your first cat and you don't have any other cats to do test mates with well then you still want to check the inbreeding coefficiency and make sure that it's not too high there are some really really high ones and i've seen some really beautiful beautiful cats and just absolutely fell in love with these cats and then once i checked the coefficiency that changed my mind like ooh, that's too high for me you know i don't feel comfortable working with a cat who has that much inbreeding so i had to pass on that other people may be more comfortable with that and they have different limits of you know what you're willing to accept as far as an inbreeding coefficient. So uh, there's some guidelines in the course that talks about that. And then you, of course, need to do your research and make sure that you know what those are. All right, you wanna ask for pa parents of the kitten. I mentioned that in the initial package that you asked for from the breeder. You wanna see what these kittens' parents look like. Um, they're inheriting the physical traits from the parents. So if you don't like the way the parents look, then odds are you may not be happy with what this kitten looks like once it's mature and has developed into an adult or what the kittens look like, the offspring that you get from using this cat in your breeding program. So look at the parents. And if you can go further than that, you can start looking at grandparents, great grandparents. You can use the pedigree to search for the cats online using like quotation marks so that you're getting an exact match and see if you can find any photos of them. Yeah, that's always kind of fun to see what ancestors look like and how far back you can find pictures of this kitten's family. That's kind of cool too. I always ask for the current weight of the kitten. That's mainly because I have received a kitten before and I didn't ask like how much does this kitten weigh? And when I got it, it was super small, super frail. If I had known that and asked different question, if I'd even asked the question, how much does the kitten weigh? What does it feel like in your hands? I may have made a different decision. I've definitely since then turned down kittens because of the weight at the age they were at. Big is not one of my priorities. It's definitely not what I breed for. I don't breed for size, but I do want an, a hardy, sturdy cat that feels heavy and feels strong in my hands. That's the characteristics of a Maine Coon and that's breed standard. So I'm, I'm gonna try to you know, pick that out and as best as I can in the beginning by getting a, a nice, strong kitten. So the only way for me to do that without actually feeling the kitten in my own hands is to ask the breeder the weight. And then I also like to see videos of the kitten. So you can ask for videos that are at least 30 seconds long, you know, 45 seconds long, a, a good, that doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're looking at a kitten, it's a decent amount of time. The longer, the better. You can check for things like the stance, are the legs straight? Is the tail long? How does the profile look? Anything specific that you're looking for? As far as physical characteristics, ask the breeder to show that to you. Don't be afraid to ask for that. They should actually appreciate the fact that you're looking for some of the details in your breed that matter, that, that classify this cat as being distinct from other breeds of cats. So if you see that the breeder has any issues answering your questions or don't want to send photos, I know some breeders don't want to send photos all the time and that's okay, I get that. But when you're inquiring about purchasing one for your breeding program, they should be okay with sending you some more detailed photos than just a front headshot of the kitten. Now this is, this is crazy, but I'm gonna tell you. I always ask about the health issues in the parents. And this is no joke. No one has ever told me that the parents had any issues. They're always like, no, no, this isn't every, they're healthy, they only have healthy cats. Well, I don't know, that's kind of sus. I don't know if I believe that or not. I just think that it's such taboo to have a cat that has a health issue that nobody will admit it. They won't tell you if there's problems in the lines. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. 
I do not understand it, but it exists. Believe me, it's out there. So if you don't know the breeder personally, and you don't know the cats personally, and the whole history, like you don't know for real about this cat, I don't think there's any way for you to tell if you're getting good lines. Like, are you getting healthy lines? Are the parents healthy? Do they have any genetic issues? And we're not just talking about the things that you test for through the, the DNA testing. No, I'm talking about other issues that come up that you can't test for. There's no genetic markers for, but they absolutely get passed down to the offspring. That's the things that I want to know about when I'm buying a kitten. The test, and by the way, the DNA testing can be negative, negative across the board. That doesn't mean that your cat is not going to develop this disease. It just means they are not a carrier of the gene and they are not at, at higher risk than the next cat. But it does not exempt that kitten from ever getting that disease. So anyway, back to what I was saying. That was a side note. The health of the kitten, it's, it's always up in the air in my opinion. If you, when you get the kitten at home, and you start to observe something that's not right. Later you find out that it's something genetic, maybe that they got from their parents or that this problem they're having is genetic. I can't say for sure if the parents had it, but I, there's no way that a breeder would ever admit to it. You know what, when I've mentioned I had one issue with one of my kittens, I had to spay her before she ever had any mating occurrences or she never produced any kittens but I had to spay her early and when I talked to the breeder about it it was probably one of the first issues I had she said she was fine when she left here and I think that's like the general statement like no one wants to no one wants to admit that they might have a problem in their lines and I think that is so wrong I I just wish that people would admit when their cats have a problem and they or they have an issue let I don't know if they just have a health issue tell the truth and just put it out there right just put it out there people appreciate honesty way more than they appreciate lies so when you're let's you know try to change this community and put it out there if you are breeding a sick cat then you probably should reconsider what you're doing when health temperament and type is our goals of our cattery those are the goals and health is first so if you have a problem that is affects the quality of life of the cat and the offspring then the cat shouldn't be used in your breeding program i went off on a soapbox okay so hopefully this checklist can help you make better decisions when you're working with a breeder. It might be a little overzealous, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Like if you have a guideline to go by and like, oh yeah, okay, I don't want to forget to ask for the pedigree. I don't want to forget to ask for the test. I don't want to forget to ask for pictures. This is going to help you remember that. By the way, you can download this checklist in the show notes. They're on the website. Just go to catbreedersensei.com. Go to podcast in the menu at the top and then look for episode six. And that's where you can download this checklist for vetting a breeder when you're buying a kitten. Hopefully this is going to help you today and in the future. I use this checklist every time that I'm looking to add a new cat to my cattery. If you like this episode of Cat Breeder Sensei Says or just our podcast in general, do us a favor and leave us a positive review. Whatever platform you're listening to the podcast on, give us a good liking. Give us a good rating. We want to get the word out there that this is available for breeders. Whether you're a new breeder or you're an experienced breeder, it's always nice to have a positive community that you can share your experiences with and maybe get some new insight. Who knows? We are on Instagram as April Catito with a K. And also on Facebook, April Catito, and it's listed under our podcast. So you can look for us on either one of those social media platforms, or you can visit us on our website, catbreedersensei.com. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, and let's get out there and be the positive impact that our cats need. I'll see you next time on Cat Breeder Sensei Says.